Hello and welcome to the seventh section, creating a schedule plot. By this section, you should be familiar with using methods, functions, and creating SVGs. In the previous section, we created a bar graph, whereas in this one, we will create a schedule plot and learn more things about some new methods. Before getting into action, let me show you an example of a schedule plot. A schedule plot is a way to show data where a dot represents two values, so you have to know the x and y coordinates. Scatter plots are really useful when you have your data in a close range and not in a wider one. OK, now let's start coding and visualizing. All right, so far I have three new files an index.html, an app.js, and a style.css. First, I'm going to explain to you what exactly is on my index.html. And actually, I haven't changed a lot of things. The head section is the same. The only thing that has changed is now I have section 7, whereas before I had section 6. And in the body section, everything is the same. So I have an ID with a bar chart and then two scripts. One, which is for the library G3.js, and you totally need this one. And another one, which is just for the app.js, and you certainly also need this one, but maybe you have your file with another name, which is totally fine. First, let's go through style.css. Here I have the bar chart with a width, height, background color, and margin. Also, this is the same as before, and the only thing that I have changed is the margin, where before this first value was in 10 pixels, and now it's on 20 pixels. If you want to keep it in 10 pixels, that's totally fine and everything will be shown fine. And last but not least, you have the app.js, and here I have three variables. The last two ones are the bar chart width and height, and these are exactly the same as in the sixth section. But now I have another variable, which is the data, and this is an object that includes other objects. An object is like an array, so it's like a big array, that includes other arrays. Every value that you see is randomly unsigned. And inside every line, as you can see, I have two points or two values. For example, the first one is 300 and 150, and this is for the x and y point. In total, I have eight points, and later you will see them in the schedule plot. I would suggest you to also give some random values. You don't have to use the same as mine. And now I think it's time to start creating our own SVG elements. Again, I would suggest you to pause this video and try to build it on your own. After that, I'm going to show you my solution. Okay, did you create it, the element? Well, let me show you how I do it. As you can see, the first thing that I did was creating a variable, and this variable is named SVG. Then I'm going to need the method select, and inside there I'm going to select the SVG. Right after that, I also need to append. So I'm going to use the method append, and inside there I'm going to have the SVG. So now I'm going to change the select, because it's actually bar chart and not SVG. The SVG is going to be appended. OK. If you did that, then you also should have added two more attributes. The first attribute is for the height, and the second one is for the width. It doesn't matter if you have reversed these attributes, so maybe first you write your width, which is totally fine, and then your height. For me, this is budget height, and then I'm also going to do the same with the width, so I'm going to have width and then a bar chart width. Okay, if you also did that, then I think we can continue with creating the circles. Just to keep everything tidy, I'm going to use a comment and I will say create circles. 
All right, now I'm going to use the SVG that I just created. And this time I'm going to use the select all function and not the select. And inside there I want to have the circle. Okay, right after that I'm going to need the data method. And inside there, as always, I'm going to pass the variable that I created, which is called data. And of course, I'm also going to need the enter and append the circle. The same as in the select all. Okay, now I'm going to have four times the attribute method. And each time I'm going to have something different. The first one that I'm going to need for the circles is the CX. And then I'm going to have a function that is going to take as an input the D. And it will return the D0, which is the first index. I'm going to do the same thing with the CY. And I'm doing this because I need an X and a Y to coordinate. So it's the same thing, I just copy and paste it. And then for the D, since I'm going to have the second index, it's going to be D1. Now let's continue with R. R stands from radius, and because we have circles, we also need the radius. Last but not least, I'm going to use the fill method, and this time I'm going to give it a color, let's say gray, but of course you can use whatever you may like. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm going to continue and show you the result in the next one, so just keep watching. So far, we have created the basic structure of a skater plot. Coming up is learning how to create labels that we also saw in a previous section. And of course, we are going to display the data and sew them into our browser.